Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do an oil painting for my uh, November 19th oil painting class. But I want to uh, give you a little preview of kind of what goes on behind the scenes before I start an oil painting. So I thought I would take a few minutes here and put a little video clip on the front of this that shows you what I do even before I put the paints out on my palette uh, when I have my blank canvas in front of me and I have a, a painting that I want to do from a photograph. So I have my usual photograph, uh, as you've seen before, of the uh, scene. I have a value map, as I usually show you, uh, from the scene, which kind of helps me keep my mid values, uh, dark values and light values in check as I go through the painting. Um, but also, before I put the sketch on the canvas, I usually take the photograph and do a, a grid, a four by five grid. And this is what I make available to my students uh, who really are not expert sketchers or uh, drawers. Um, they like to have something that's a little bit easier to get the, get a, uh, get the scene on the canvas. So uh, I'll show you here just in a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to actually draw it for you uh, before I do the painting. But I have my canvas in a grid. As you can see here, I have the white charcoal that's... Uh, uh, four rows by five columns and uh, I have also even before I start this I have completed a a little value sketch um, that has helped me work out the lights and darks so this is something that uh, it's pretty common many artists do this particularly when they're painting from a photograph um, it's a good idea to do a little thumbnail type sketch about the size of a a playing card, something like that. And it has also a 4x5 grid over it, so I can see where the relative uh, uh, objects are and keep them in, in the same relative position as the photo. That this assumes that your photo is something that you want to paint exactly. Um, usually the photo has been maybe cropped or changed in some way to emphasize one part or another of the painting. So to do the sketch, I start with a blank grid like this, and I have my photograph references beside me. And I want to kind of put in the, the, the major objects in this painting um, are going to be sort of the rocks in the foreground. And they sort of, some very, very large rocks here, and they sort of go like this. Um, another rock that's in here. And so I'll just sort of put these major objects in here like this and um, typically I don't even show you this when I start painting I usually have my sketch already on the canvas and it makes the overall video a little shorter but it also kind of deprives you of seeing how I got to where I started from so these are just some rocks that are going to be laying in the water and uh, I want to try to get them in. They're sort of the important part of the painting here in the foreground and has some nice shadows here that I want to emphasize. Um, this area here, this entire square is really uh, dark uh, bushes that sort of are on the edge and they go down to another set of rocks in here. There's a big rock that sort of starts here and juts out comes over to the middle of the painting. This painting has a waterfall in it, so um, I want to sort of just get these big shapes in here. Um, the waterfall actually uh, starts about right here. There's a tree. I don't want to miss this tree. It sort of comes up this way and goes up like this. It has a, a place where part of the tree has been broken off Seems like this, kind of comes back a little bit like this. So I'm doing that. I have my uh, tree branches up here. Um, have another, actually, I have two more um, tree trunks that sort of stick up like this and kind of merge in with the, the other trees so I'll put those basic trunks in they have some nice shadows on them that I want to make sure I preserve uh, down here 
And this area has a lot of shadow on it. So, and then all of this is just sort of um, interesting shapes. I'll leave a few air holes for light to shine through. Uh, the background is very, uh, let's see, let's put in the, the waterfall. The top of the waterfall is about right here. So I'm going to put that across. It goes all the way across to this area here, actually all the way through this square. So I'm using these squares, aligning them up with the grid, and uh, the frothy part of the waterfall starts here and uh, kind of goes like this and comes over here like that. Um, the bottom of the waterfall is just about as even with the bottom of this rock or where it hits the water anyway. So that's going to be that. I'm going to have some more rocks floating out in this area. Okay, like something like this. Little rocks. The waterfall here, I have another bank of rocks that uh, are above this waterfall here. And they're, from the photograph, of course, they're about the same value, so it's hard to see them. So I'm going to have to change the color and the values of them a little bit to make sure that they show up. These rocks right in here are very light and kind of go this way. There's some bushes on, or some shrubs and that sort of thing. So it looks like a complicated drawing, but it's not really all that complicated. The background really starts, uh, this, this water is just right about here, it sort of ends. And then the background bank starts here, there's a lot of trees and, and uh, different kinds of things in the background here. Um, there's some nice trees that stick up into the sky here. Um, a couple big trees over here like this, so the sky is very small in this painting. Um, and I'll just sort of put in these some indicators for some trees over here. And um, that's pretty much all I want to do for this drawing. Um, and I just copied it off of the, uh, the photograph that has a grid over it. So it's taking me uh, less than about six or seven minutes to do this. So I will leave it at that. I will get out my paints now and uh, get ready to start painting this painting and uh, I'll be right back after I put my uh, paints on the palette. Well I'm back. Okay I hope you like that little introduction with the uh, sketch that I put on the canvas for you. Um, so we're ready to go. I'll uh, explain to you uh, about the brushes and the uh, paints very quickly. Uh, the brushes we're using is a standard Bob Ross set that I've told you about before. It's really a, a Bob Ross one inch landscape brush a uh, painting knife and I have I use a script liner and I have a number 10 filbert and a <clears throat> number 12 flat that I buy from uh, Dick Blick that I add to the mixture so that I have uh, a couple of smaller brushes that Bob Ross doesn't have in his set and uh, that's pretty much all I use um, and I may not use all those brushes it really depends on how the painting goes and how I feel about it um, the paints I'll go through them very quickly um, I've gone through them before with you, uh, as usual, but uh, I'll say them again here. Titanium White, uh, Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red, and I add a little bit of Grumbacher Ultramarine Violet there. So that's the paints, that's the brushes. I've shown you the, the sketch and I've uh, actually drawn it for you this time and so I'll zoom in here and get set and get ready to go as soon as I get this lined up on my canvas about right so you can see the whole thing okay I think we are ready um, I'm going to start with just a little bit of liquid white not much we don't have much sky in this painting uh, but we do have some water and uh, we have some uh, areas that need to have the the soft softness that uh, this liquid white can bring and the, the spreadability that we get with uh, liquid white. So I'm going to put some up here um, where the sky is going to go. It's going to kind of overlap in this area. Actually comes down into here uh, some over this way. I'm just kind of throwing it on here approximately where the sky is going to go. Um, 
there and we'll have some uh, the waterfall and the, uh, the water is going to be down in this area uh, we'll have some water I don't want don't to wipe out too much of my sketch because I want to just keep track of where things are uh, but the, the waterfall itself is about right here and uh, the water below it will have some more if I need more liquid white after a bit I'll put a little bit more in here but basically this is what I want to just sort of get in my mind <clears throat> where major elements are in this painting um, and that's about all we have to do for that sky at least for the liquid white portion of the sky I should say uh, all right, I'll lay that down and get ready to start on the sky itself. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, of my blue here, some titanium white, and just a touch of brush and Prussian blue in here, and a touch of alizarin. Start getting this sort of a lavender color sky. Got some blue in more parts. Parts of it have more blue in it, and I'll start probably over here with that darker blue and kind of work my way toward the center it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as the paint runs out in the brush using a big X stroke it makes a nice active sky a little bit of alizarin in there to sort of uh, brighten it up a little bit it shows distance it helps uh, looks like the, uh, there's more depth in the sky. The sky at the top of the painting is actually the sky that's closer to you. The sky that's over in this area is the sky that's farther away. So to add some depth to it we add this little bit of alizarin in there to make it uh, look like it's a little further away. Just kind of touch it on the bottom here. <clears throat> Maybe some over here as well. Okay don't need too much. Put a few, uh, some white in here for some clouds in some areas. Um, maybe put even just a touch of this uh, midnight black in there to sort of gray down some areas to give ourselves a little bit of shadow under these clouds. I picked up a little too much blue, I think. There's some cloud texture, shadows. Just something like this. It's pretty nondescript sky. The sky is not the important part of this painting. Uh, the falls and the rocks are more the what is of interest. So I'm going to cover up quite a bit of that sky with some trees and anyway, so I'm not overly worried about what it looks like. I just want to make sure I have the canvas covered with a nice coat of paint. I have some things that look like some clouds back there. And leave it alone. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I think I'm going to give myself a little distance by putting a a light layer of uh, maybe they're clouds, maybe they're mountains, I don't know. But right in here, I'm just sort of going to darken it up just a little bit to add some a little more depth. Anytime you put on another layer of paint, you're adding some depth to the painting. And uh, the more depth you can add, the more interesting the painting. Something like that is probably pretty good. Okay, <clears throat> now trees and uh, background. The trees in the middle are really in the farthest background and then they come forward. So I'm going to start, I'm going to keep my big brush going here. I'm going to pick up some of this blue and get a little bit of uh, green in there for the background. Not really, it's not strong. It's got to be really sort of faint. Maybe even pull this purple in here, but I want to get some, some trees off in this distance back here and see if I can make it look like <clears throat> trees in the distance. Oh, this 
lavender and some green a bit of red to gray it down Maybe a little hard to see even on the camera, I don't know. Start adding a little yellow in here, get some ochre going. Show some trees that are changing colors. This is sort of a fall scene. big old brush here. Yellow ochre. A touch of red in there, redden it up a little bit. And come back and pick up a little greens. to darken it down so it looks stands out. It's a little uh, sap green and uh, Prussian blue here. I'm just making one layer on top of another back here. Give myself some really nice, I'm going to make sure I don't cover up my big tree here. The one tree that comes up like this has a lot of green beside it. like that. Leave some of these other greens in here. We're going to put more trees on top of it, but that's kind of what I want to try for now and see <clears throat> what that looks like. It looks like a lot of trees in the distance. That's what I want it to look like, yeah. Okay, uh, maybe just a tad more in here. I think it's time to get rid of the big brush. I'm going to wash it out and uh, get me a smaller brush. The trees are, grab this uh, filbert, number 10 filbert, and uh, we'll start working on some trees that have a little more definition in them. Uh, combinations of yellows, bright yellows back there, and ochres, like in this area. Right in here. I want to put in some trees that sort of stand out. Come down really to the top of this. Pick up a little brown, some of my reddish brown from uh, burnt sienna, or uh, dark sienna rather. I may call this brown burnt sienna from time to time. That's the color that is in other palettes like uh, most paints, uh, Bob Ross colors, he calls it dark sienna. Um, I think it's the same color actually, but I uh, want this to have a lot of interesting uh, colors back here, make it look like a nice fall scene. Still got evergreens, but you got other trees that are changing the colors. And uh, around this tree back in here, we've got a big tree that goes up. Just want to color this, put a base coat on this canvas back here. This is all above the waterfall. And then we got rocks coming in on this side over here, so. Trying to get some interesting shapes, put in a few darker areas here, maybe. Picking up some Van Dyke brown here. Um, over this area it starts to get 
paint around these trees so I know where they remember where they are. When I come back to paint those trees, I'll have a good idea where they are. Anyway, and over here we got a lot of ochres and color up here. This these trees are a lot closer. And I'll put some more details on those later, but I wanted to get this background sort of laid in around these trees here. Mix up the colors. It starts getting redder and more rusty color down here toward the bottom. This area. Okay. Okay. Take a little step back and look. How are we looking? I feel like I got a lot of depth in there so far. <clears throat> um, one more ochre, let's see. Oh, this blue with this ochre. Let's see if I can get another value of green here in some of these areas. Sort of kind of push up. You can make these interesting little tree shapes back there by just pushing your brush up, uh, mixing the colors up, putting in some uh, reds to kind of gray it down in some areas. Darks, lights, the mixtures will help you tell the story that this is um, a lot of trees here in the distance. And these go right off the canvas. It helps the illusion that this is a valley where the water would come down in and and be collecting and making this waterfall happen. of colors here, different colors of greens. Pick up even some lighter values of in here. All along here, this is sort of a sort of grayed out color of these rocks. Okay, all right, <clears throat> so I got this pulled together here. There's going to be some trees over there. Okay, all right, got some depth in there. That's what I was trying to do. Um, step back and look at it. <clears throat> I think I want to put a few trees in that distance. I'm going to get my uh, script liner out now already and uh, pick up some thinner and uh, some of these colors of brown and mix a little blue with it to get a gray. I think I'll get a gray out of this maybe. If not, I'll get a gray out of this. Okay. Get some, uh, put some thinner on there to get it uh, nice and loose and soft. Um, there's some tree trunks back in here that we want to put in while we're painting in this area. take off and go right off the top of the canvas. Like that. 
some more in here. A lot of trees. Some of them are dead. Some are still alive and kicking. Straighten this one out a little bit. <clears throat> bit of a some white sort of white light trunks here in some areas that where the sun's hitting off of them so I'm gonna throw in a few of those jobs here okay I don't want that to get real interesting over there but that'll do um, i grab my fan brush. I haven't used this fan brush for ages. Um, pick up some white and uh, I'm going to get some bit of blue in it. <clears throat> That's Prussian blue. Add a little green to it. See if we can make us a, a tree that's got some, uh, looks like a pine tree back there in the distance. It's not too, uh, we do that by touching this way and sort of using the corners. Um, I think we're blue in there, darken it down a little bit. It's not dark enough. So you can see the Kind of a tree there. There's maybe another one over here somewhere. Something like that. Um, maybe another one or two over here that's going to have some trunks in them that I'll stick in. Put this uh, some dark sort of a purplish color in here that will give us some new colors. I got a whole mixture of colors going on here now. Just put in some little interesting tree shapes back there. Even over here there's a few that are sort of sticking out like this. Some more dark on here so that we have a nice dark stands out from the background. If you make it darker, it'll stand out from the background and whatever's behind it. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty close to what I was looking for. I'll cover it with some of these other trees on the left side in a minute, but uh, at least those are, that's a start for that background. Um, I'm going to come back now while I've got my <coughs> my brush here with uh, my um, script liner. Put a few trunks in here maybe that just sort of are there and then they're not there. It's sort of hit and miss. It's sort of like a... You don't see the whole whole trunk, but there's enough in there to tell you that there is a trunk in there. A little darker maybe over here. Over here, put a little trunk or two in. All right, I don't want to mess around with this background too much. I'll be taking your eye out of the, the painting where I want you to be looking. Uh, but I want it to look a little finished back here anyway, at least so there's some, you can tell there's some a lot of woods and a lot of things going on back here. Okay, something like this. Um, another way to make these <clears throat> trees um, 
look very nice is to add in just a few don't leave them all looking like they're spindly Then down here in the close to the water we're going to get some more of this yellows start picking up some ochres. I have some ochre in there. I want to put a little brighten it up a little bit with some brighter yellow. This is sort of a bright area right in here. So I'm just going to throw in some almost some cad yellow on top of that to uh, make it brighter back there. Sun's hitting on some areas and I want those to sort of stand out. <clears throat> it's even hitting on some over here. Let's put a few over there. All right, now, <clears throat> how are we doing? I think that's about enough time on that background. All right, looking good. So I think it's time to start looking now at the, uh, <clears throat> the rocks in this distance here in the middle ground. I'm going to use my uh, filbert brush again. And I've got to mix up a color that's sort of a light, <clears throat> light brown. Light brown and sort of gray. It has some elements of black and brown in it. <clears throat> I'm using titanium white and dark sienna with a little bit of midnight black. Let's see if I can get a color that maybe represents the top of these rocks here. back and carve these rocks out maybe a little bit better when I come back here in a minute but I wanted to get these the base for these rocks in now these rocks have a interesting shadows in them and we'll be putting those in more as we move down. They sort of change colors as they come down here and they start getting a different shape even. They start getting more of this uh, kind of see the sides of them. They're more rounded like this. This is sort of flat with some rocks in it. Um, we have some rocks that kind of come down and touch the water here. And then there's just a lot of rocks over here. So this paint is going to be a lot about rocks and getting a chance to make them look fairly realistic with our brushes and our painting knife. Um, I don't just use the painting knife for rocks anymore. I've been using the, the brush like the, uh, like the filbert and other brushes to give better, a little better definition to the rocks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see, going across here we have a few more rocks in some areas. Let's put in this little gray area here that's above the water. Pick up some more of that. I want this to look like some rocks back there. 
and um, so I come down in this area as well. Big rocks over here. So I pick up a little bit of a lizard to sort of redden them up just a little maybe. These rocks are what holds in this this waterfall and comes over here like this. Okay, this is the side of these rocks. All right, get this base coat on there and uh, come back and define those rocks in a little bit better. Over here, we've got these rocks back here. Got some rocks right in here. All right. This is all water. That's all water. We've got big rocks here, water down there. Um, some of these rocks in the foreground <coughs> are, might put a couple of those in just to let you know where we're going with them. They're going to have a little more color in them, I think, than the other ones because they're closer. So we'll just kind of Throw in some ideas here for rocks, and uh, that'll do us for a while. We're going to come back and touch this up after a while with some other colors. Okay, um, our our big tree here. I think I want to start putting him in and see if I can get. be darker and some part of it's going to be darker the tree's gonna trunk's gonna go right up there I have some highlights on this left side and some shadows in there. Another dark tree trunk in here, like right in here. Kind of gets lost in the trees. And then there's a, another one even to the left of that that's got some crazy colors in it. gets lost in the trees as well and we'll just base coat it right now with something like that probably looks kind of ugly on the on here but those are the beginnings of those trees I'm going to come and put a lot more uh, definition on them but we got a lot of this color that repeats itself down here behind these rocks uh, so the rocks can stand out this is all shrubs and different colors of grasses and all that sort of stuff down here um, that rock we have a, a lot of dark shadowy stuff going on put a little ochre in there to lighten it up a little bit I'm just sort of abstractly putting these, these kind of things in here to make it uh, look like I've got trees mixed with shrubs and all kinds of stuff right now. It's not supposed to look exactly like anything yet, but this is the idea I want to try to get across. Got three trees over there, and uh, <clears throat> I'll be putting more more um, branches and stuff on there. This sort of gets darker and comes down around here. Like this. Okay, goes over. There's a... This rock has some... 
interesting colors on top of it. I'm going to put that water in before I get too far along with these rocks. So I'm just going to place the placeholder here for these rocks. There's several rocks right in here. And uh, we'll just sort of find that right now. Leave a spot for the water. There's actually a secondary rock that kind of sticks up here, like right in here. Right in there is a rock. Okay, so we're making some progress here. Looks kind of ugly on that left side, but uh, the sun, that's all in shadow, so it has to uh, look darker and uh, so I'll sort of blend some of these together here, start getting some there's okay now water is all in here down there. Okay. See how we're doing here. Start looking at this water here. <clears throat> Pick up some white and maybe a little of this blue that's phthalo blue sort of the color of the water it's got a lot of different shades in it but it starts back in here under these rocks so it runs this way actually shows up over here and even a little bit back there um, I changed brushes to this little uh, half inch Taclon wash brush. It has some really sharp edges and it lets me put in some nice um, sharp marks back here. and represent this water as it flows toward the, the falls. It's getting some shadows from the trees. But it starts, it actually picks up a little bit of a greenish color. Let's see if I can put just a little green in there. The water, as we've said before, really doesn't have a color. It really picks up colors that are around it and reflects them. You're either looking through the water to see something or it's reflecting the sky which makes it look bluish or it's you're looking through it to see what's underneath it or it's reflecting what's around it so that's the idea with water how do you figure out what color water is so I'm just trying to paint in these areas here that are Kind of left open right now around these rocks and these trees. Okay, it's starting to look like some water in the distance. We don't have too much of it. Uh, it starts getting, uh, it's not very, uh, well, I want to say it's not very uh, long. I think I have this probably too long here. These have more white in it, but let me try this back here, the bank. Got some rocks sticking out. Try to make those look right. This is all, this is some of the color that actually fall, flows over the falls. So as it comes here, it sort of starts getting this, this look about it. Um, Mm -hmm. 
something like this and it's got some splashes hitting the rocks over there <coughs> over this way um, I want to get some more white clean this brush out quickly and see if I can get some more white back there I want a little bit of this white to sort of there's areas where it's sort of hitting in some rocks back here and I want it to sort of foam up a little bit so it kind of tells you what's going on so I just put titanium white on here and I'm just sort of making little ripples with the edge of this brush and as it starts coming over in this area there's getting a lot of splashy foamy looking water in here something like that down here there's more foam a lot of foam going on sometimes we've used our um, like a fan brush or something we'll actually pull up take the white and pull up and make it look like it's foaming which is another way to inject that foam in there it's a lot of turbulence in this area um, a lot of foaminess going on here I'm just sort of scumbling the brush here get, picking up some other colors making it look like it's got a lot of a lot of movement to it over here it sort of fades out step back and see what that looks like getting some nice foaminess just titanium white and it's picking up some darks here and there but this is the, you know, the waterfall and this water is really what you're trying to focus on as much as anything and it sort of starts getting back to the blues here at this area about right in here all right so we're flipping this in a little bit of green in it every once in a while it is picking up a little green color just adding a little sap green down here at the bottom it sort of starts giving you a thick little blue and sap green and white start giving you a little bit of a turquoise color if you get too much green it starts looking like grass but if you get the right amount of blue um, it starts looking turquoise blue and white over here just to be nice dark blue by these because we're picking up shadows now from the, the rocks more phthalo blue more white <clears throat> This is an area I could have picked up some more liquid white and thrown in here. Didn't do it, but uh, in fact, I'll just get just a tad on my brush now to sort of, it makes it go on so much smoother and faster. Um, losing some of the color, it also thins the color out quite a bit. So let's get it going back here. Okay. Rocks over here. Let's paint around the rocks as much as possible. And stick in a few more dark blue marks to represent this turbulence and shadows a 
All right, that's enough for now. I'll come back and always touch that up some more, but we're going to put in some more shadows in here to make it give this some depth. Right now, it's all <clears throat> pretty much one value, and uh, if we leave it that way, it won't look as good as if we can put some other shadows in there and get ourselves two or three values in there. Okay. All right, I think it's time to go back to these rocks on the right-hand side now and see if I can form those a little better. By using my same brush here, I'm going to use the same brush and see if I can insert some dark shadows in places and see if I can carve these rocks out and make them look like they're, they have more definition back here. There's a lot of vertical shadows in here because these rocks are sort of piled along the edges of this bank. So I'm just using some um, midnight black in this brush and just sort of putting in some shadow areas. To Basically I'm carving out these rocks. You can see uh, by putting in some shadows under them that the rock on top is starting to show up. Um, the, um, there's areas down here that are darker. The top of the rock, the part that faces up, is the part that we want to be the lightest. Although the sun is sort of hitting on this <coughs> from the left. Um, we want these to be, have the vertical part has to have, it has to look like a, a vertical rock face is what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm making vertical brush strokes, pulling down and leaving some of these horizontal strokes in here basically help tell you that these are rocks sort of sitting on top of each other. Got cracks in them and little shadows behind them here that help define one rock to the other. And I want to probably come back and put a little more highlights on there in a minute <clears throat> because I want those to look like they are facing the sun, but they're also stacked along this edge here. Okay. I have to step back every so often and see if it's looking like we're getting a pile of big set of rocks back here. And one thing I've learned is that you, if you try to paint every rock you see in the photograph, you'll drive the viewer crazy. So don't paint every rock be selective. Less is more. And if it looks like the rocks are getting too busy and you're getting too many of them in an area, blend some together. Like take out some of your lines and make it uh, connect with another rock and you'll end up with a better looking set of rocks than if you had them all individually defined. The more you put in, sometimes the worse it looks. Because you are abstracting this scene down to a scene that's probably, you know, 100 feet wide, we're putting it down to 11 inches wide. So if you try to put everything in that you see in the photograph, you'll end up with way too much detail and the viewer will not be a happy viewer. 
these are almost too distinct. I gotta change the values here in some of these. But I do have some lights and dark mid values. I need some darker values now to help identify the crevices and behind some of these rocks here. So my dark is going to come in here like this and show you we have rocks that are sort of piled up here. All right, I can probably spend a, a lot of time on this. Which I don't really want to do. I don't, I'll bore you to death. Where these rocks start touching the water, they tend to get a little darker from the water that splashes on them. So let's sort of put that in. That'll be our dark dark areas here, and we'll blend it up into the rock. And then by putting in a few horizontal lines here will define a few more rocks. Um, over here this should be a little darker probably right in here and there. So that the difference in where you put this dark helps tell the viewer what's going on back here. Um, we've got some rocks that kind of lined up back here in a way that need to be defined. It's hard for you to see that probably on the video, but anyway, this is sort of the idea I'm trying to get across. I've watched another painter paint rocks like this, and he'll spend an hour just to paint a bed of rocks like this. Um, they look very beautiful when you get done, but it also takes a long time, and I'm trying to not put out super long videos, although my videos are pretty long by YouTube standards. But I'm putting a nice shadow on this side of the rock. And it's got shadows from the trees hitting down in here. shadows are throwing all kinds of things on these rocks. Now, if we get too close to it, I'll have to get back. Yeah. And more of that under here. Kind of really dark under this part of the rock. I'm using some of my ultra purple here and a little midnight black. So I Put a little bit of uh, ochre and alizarin in there, and then come back with a little highlight or two here and there. Like 
right in here. A little highlight there, maybe one over there. Give that rock some life. Okay. Um, how about looking at these trees over here now? I think maybe it's time to start working on those. Um, get my, I'm going to get my bristle brush here, my, uh, or my number 10 filbert. Another filbert here that's a little bit uh, newer. It has a little longer bristles on it. And uh, so I'm going to start putting together some colors for these trees here in the upper left corner. It's got some orange in it, it's got some yellow in it, so I'm using ochre, bright red, cad yellow. Um, I already have some of that on the canvas, but I want to put a little more back here. And um, mix up some few greens in there. There's still some green floating around in some of these trees. Things kind of come out and just sort of tail out this way. Have more in this area. Pick up some darker colors in some areas to give it some shadow. These are going to go right over some of my pine trees, which is okay. Um, still a little green, some yellows. Pick up more reds, more rust color. In here, there's a lot of this that starts merging with what's at the bottom down here. <clears throat> a lot of lot of leaves hanging around here. using a mixture of different colors to sort of embed in over these. Right, it's got to stand out enough so that you know there's some something going on there that it doesn't blur too much with what's underneath there. I wonder what that looks like from the distance. It's starting to get there. I think I want to take a little more of this right off the canvas up here. Got some nice air holes in there, nice sky holes, whatever. Um, pick up some lighten this color up a little bit to give myself some highlights on these over here because there is some highlights sticking through. Just a little white with uh, some uh, cad yellow or one of the other yellows in there. some trunks in there to make sure you know what that is. So the photograph is making this all dark black and uh, that's why you can't go by the photograph exactly because you'll end up with a bunch of black on your painting and it's not going to show up. It's not going to look right. So we're trying to put in these colors to make sure that it 
I'm telling you there's a lot of underbrush and growth here and bushes and that sort of thing and uh, so I have to lighten it up compared to what's in a photograph. Um, where's my knife here? I'm going to put in a few of our some of our scrapes in here with uh, just some simple ones I can actually use a like the back of this night uh, painting brush here would give me a little wider and a little different type it doesn't scrape it out quite as cleanly as the palette knife does but it does show some vertical strokes here that look like there's trees and other things going on in the distance back here so it's just another way to make these uh, Things look a little more realistic. We have a lot of bushes and things floating around in here. Actually, I kind of like that better than using that knife to scrape it out. The knife makes a nice sharp point, but um, it's almost too small for this particular painting. Um, okay. Now, oh, I want to put in some branches here while I've got my... Uh, Grip liner available. Pick up some uh, that white and some of my black. Get myself a sort of grayish color that has a little yellow in it. Maybe has to be dark enough that you can see it. I'm gonna put some of it in here like this. They actually kind of hang out and stick down. There's some trunks that sort of go out like this and stick out. <clears throat> Up here, I want to make sure you see some very fine fine lines up here. Some over here, maybe. Um, this is all kind of buried in the woods, but you ha can see some of these, so I'm trying to put some in that you can see. I put a few more dark ones over here so that it doesn't look like it's all white bark. So just sort of cleaning this area up a little bit so that it looks like it's a nice, this is sort of a where a tree has been broken off. And I want it to be darker on the right side. And it should match with the dark of this tree here. We do have some lighter areas in this tree um, where the sun is sort of hitting on the bark in some areas. So I'm going to try to lighten up some areas, put some highlights in here that make it look like there's some shadows that are if I paint the white it makes it look like the shadows hitting those trees all right what else we got down here we got some more shrubs and bushes okay that will do for now for that um, let's go back here and see if I can put a little bit of uh, get my big knife out here I haven't used it for a while so let's put it out here and see if I can get some rock faces on here with it real quick a rock and here's a rock face can't it doesn't stand out from what's behind it so I'm gonna have to either make it lighter or make the background darker usually means I'll make this background darker because this is in shadow back here I'm talking about this area right here that I was just putting that knife stroke in this area behind it is not dark enough so it doesn't stand out so let's darken this area down. Now you can see the top of that rock better. A 
top of that rock's pretty well understood. Um, I have this safe surface of the rock is actually really dark because it's out of the shadow. There's another real dark area right in here. Between these rocks, we've got water down here. I'm going to have to put in some water there. Let me see if this looks better this way. I'm not too crazy about the way that knife left it. Left some nice little textures in there. That's not too bad. Um, got a few more that I could throw in here, like right in here maybe. that. Another couple rocks over here. You get a nice sharp edge with this knife. Um, but I can also get that sharp edge by using my small uh, wash uh, brush. Okay, that'll do for a while. Let me hold off on that. Get my little wash brush back here and see if I can fine tune this now. Um, we have some more water down here. I'm just picking up just a bit of liquid white to sort of cover the canvas because I know I'm going to have water in this area and I want it to flow smoothly. Water in here. That's not water, that's a rock. Okay. This is a rock here. I want it to be lighter than the one behind it, so let's lighten it up. And there we go. And there's a rock right in here. It needs to be lighter. that. It has a little bit of darkness on this side of it because it's kind of going out of the shadow in the shadow. So we'll put some dark on there. Next rock over is really combined with this big rock. I'm not going to make separate ones. I'm going to put them together. Okay, so those are looking like some nice rocks, have different values, so the lights stand out in front of the darks. If you make them all the same value, you end up with just a glob. We don't want globs. This rock has a dark shadow on him over here, like this. If I can flick it up there like that, okay. A little more dark on him. Some of these are rounded, some are angular, um, but they all have, try to get three values on them if I can. A dark value, a mid value, and a light value. So this is going to have some dark down here. I hope you can see this because it's it's obvious to me, but I'm not sure this on the video if it's obvious as it is to me here. I won't know till I edit the video, and by that time it's too late, so I have to assume that this is going to be right. I'm just putting this little set of rocks across here. There's another little rock that sits out there. All right, and the rest of that around there has water uh, around it. So I'm trying to get a nice dark shadow in this area that re re represents the sun reflecting and it's making this water a lot darker. Um, and I think that's coming through. Start getting some more of my blue and white here. 
and it, the color starts changing a little more as it comes down this way, but I'm going to connect it using my wash brush here. this all finished off and come back and fine-tune some of these places darker Here we start getting not blue but sort of brownish colors bluish and brown because they're reflecting down into the water this water is fairly still over here so I want I want vertical brush strokes over here one down it's calmer it's the water is not moving as much over here it's a lot it's out of the path of where the water is rushing and moving I gotta put some more um, whites in there to make it look like the water has more movement in it this I just put in but the idea over here in this corner is to make it soft and reflection like okay so the vertical brush strokes tell you you have soft calm water reflecting what's above it and if you have a a lot of white splashiness around it you know that it's, it's turbulent so this is sort of calm over here and down here okay now let's come back and put in some more turbulence in here like this just putting a little bit of paint on the brush and letting it pull off what it will tie this back into the water that's running over the waterfall oh, this area under this rock on the right needs to be a little more sharp I think put some looks like foam or something use our finger maybe make it look like there's some uh, look like there's some foam here where it's coming down hitting against these rocks over here it's it's calmer over here on this side but it's still There's some little reflections in some spots. All right, get back, look at it, check our time. Uh, it's looking 
decent, I think. I think my tree, what else can I do here? I'm thinking maybe these rocks on the right side could use just a little more attention. I don't know. I keep waffling on that a little bit, whether I want to put any more attention on those or not. But I think they could use some Oh, some, a little bit of light reflection, or highlight, I guess I want to say, on this right side. I'm going to try to see if I can get it just kind of an off-white here. It has a little bit of sun in it, so I'm adding just a little bit of ochre to some white. even took a little bit of this liquid white to make it run smoother. And some of these rocks, I'm going to sort of just put this a little bit of a highlight on them, if I can get that to work right. It'll add a another dimension to the part of these rocks that are facing the sun and is facing the top. It helps define them as well better. That is probably very hard for you to see, but it's just enough highlight to uh, give us a another dimension on these rocks here. I sort of just combined these together just now. That one back there in the back needs a little better highlight. Let's put a little top on him out there, top right there. So the idea is to try to see if we can get these things to re look like they're reflecting the, the sun that's overhead and yet still be part of that rock. So that's giving ourselves a little more definition. And to complete that on some of these, I want to put these some of these vertical cracks that go down into the water and actually kind of go down. helps tell the story of the kind of rocks these are, that they're they've been here a while, they've been cracked and split and okay. What else can I do here? I think maybe my highlight could work this rock as well right in here there's tried to do that once but I didn't get it done very well come back and put a little more highlight in there some other spots here and there that kind of say the sun is peeking through and hitting these rocks even here I can have a little highlight on top of some of these These are places where the sun is sort of shining through the trees and hitting on the rocks. Um, see an area that looks like it needs to have a little more dark in here somewhere like right in here where this tree trunk is. It got lost. That got lost and part of this tree trunk got lost. So I'll just go back and restate those a little bit. <clears throat> so you know there is a tree trunk in there that's supporting all this foliage. I'm going to put a few more things like this out here, maybe a
Okay. Better stop. I'm going to mess it up, make it look worse. Okay, I think that's pretty much what I want to do. I just see one more spot I think I want to touch here. <laughs> I'll see more spots even after I turn the camera off, I'm sure, but I'm going to just put a little bit of a color on top of this rock and a little bit on this rock here. They are kind of a little bit reflecting what's above them. Uh, too much. Okay. Mm, and I need a little bit of this color down in here, I believe, because I am picking up some some of the yellows from up above. All right. Tell me when to stop. I have to have somebody yell stop. Just lightly dust this across here. All right. I think that's going to do it. All right. Um, I think I'm going to stop now and say, hope you like this painting. Thank you for watching and uh, give us a try. Let me know how you do and uh, Ask me any questions, I'll try to answer them, and uh, leave me comments on YouTube, and enjoy this painting. Until I see you again, this is Laurie Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye.